Dr. Michael Twyman, a board certified cardiologist with an interest in heart attack and stroke prevention. Today, we're going to be talking about the Clearly Health Scan, which is a novel application of AI machine learning algorithms that look at CT coronary angiograms through a different lens. So the coronary arteries, there's three of them. You have a left main artery that branches into a left anterior descending artery, and then there's a circumflex which wraps around the side of the heart, and then off the other coronary cusp, you have what's known as the right coronary artery. It looks like a big C, so it's in 3D. So you think of your heart by the size of your fist, and you got three kind of uh, arteries sitting on the outside of them. So 20 million Americans have atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, 700,000 people die a year from it. Stress tests are generally late to the game. So this is a novel way of looking at risk much earlier. So you've heard me uh, cite this quote from uh, the English physician, Dr. Thomas Sindham before, a man is as old as his arteries. So you can be extremely fit on the outside, but your arteries can be thrashed. This test will help you determine where you're at on that stage of atherosclerosis. And I recently saw a podcast where, you know, the host basically uh, had a comment that, you know, if you live long enough, everybody's gonna have atherosclerosis, but not everybody's gonna die from it. So atherosclerosis is extremely common and generally starts in your teens and twenties. So how do you diagnose it? Well, hopefully before you have the heart attack and that's the first time you meet your cardiologist. So this is a cutaway of a coronary artery. And when you're born, you have a very healthy layer uh, in the artery called the endothelium. It's one cell thick and it coats the 60,000 miles of blood vessels that you have. If the endothelium is impaired or damaged in some way, less nitric oxide is produced, then whatever's floating through your bloodstream, including different lipoproteins, which are basically cargo ships for the cholesterol and the triglycerides, they may get stuck there like Velcro and cause an inflammatory response in the intima and cause the immune system to be activated. The immune system basically thinks bacteria is attacking it and sends out uh, monophages, which uh, monocytes, which become macrophages. And the macrophages are kind of like Pac-Man that eat up the invaders. And if you don't stop that process, then the plaque will continue to grow. And what happens is that the plaque becomes vulnerable. The plaque ruptures, the damaged cholesterol and cellular debris spills out into the bloodstream the blood clots, and then no oxygen or nutrients go downstream, and that causes a heart attack or stroke. So it's not that your arteries are a sewer pipe and they just fill up slowly with sludge and that gives you a heart attack. It's an actual acute plaque rupture that does that in the majority of cases. Rare cases is there a coronary dissection, but we'll I'll hold that for another day. But classically, you're not going to fail a stress test until you have generally a 70% or greater stenosis in one of your coronary arteries. So stress tests are really good if you have symptoms, but not very good at telling you are at risk of having a heart attack or not. 50% or more of people who have heart attacks have no symptoms before they have the heart attack. Again, you generally don't want to be meeting your cardiologist on the way to the cath lab. So how do you uh, avoid that situation? Well, in the past, and I still recommend this routinely, is a uh, test called the CT coronary calcium scan or CAC score. It's looking for calcifications in one of those three coronary arteries that sit on the outside of the heart calcifications, you know, should be in your bones and your teeth, should not be building up in the walls of the arteries. Calcium in the arteries is indicative that there is plaque present in the arteries. Your body's trying to scar that tissue down to prevent it from rupturing. The calcium by itself isn't a problem. It's what lays on top of those calcified plaques, which is the problem. And this new novel test from Clearly, you know, potentially could become the gold standard at telling you is that plaque more vulnerable and likely to rupture or not. So this is a traditional CT coronary angiogram looking at the different coronary arteries. And this is your left ventricle. But what's novel with this with 3D, they can uh, you know, spin your arteries all around and give some real cool pictures. But what was really beneficial for the test is giving you the uh, total volume of plaque. So this person had 200 millimeters cubed of plaque volume our percent atheroma volume is the uh, acronym here. And so that's how much plaque is in the artery walls. So the real uh, game changer for this type of uh, test is quantifying what that plaque actually is. So you know there's 200 of it or so, none of it is calcified. So this individual is gonna have a quote, normal calcium scan. And that's great. That just means they're not late to the game with you know hard calcified plaques in their arteries. 
But what you get more concerned about is the salt plaque. Is that salt plaque going to delipidate or shrink down? Is that salt plaque going to become calcified and just sit there in the artery and generally not do anything? You know, most of the time the calcified plaques don't cause problems, but if the calcified plaques grow to a degree where it's restricting blood flow in the artery, you may have symptoms. So again, if you have a 70% stenosis, you may have symptoms, um, chest pain, choice of breath, exercise and tolerance and such. But the real thing that's interesting on this test is looking at, do you have low density non-calcified plaque? So you can think about this as like baby plaque, but it's potentially more necrotic or really inflamed plaque. And it's this plaque that is potentially more likely to cause a heart attack or stroke by rupturing. So if a person has a large amount of low density non-calcified plaque, that person needs more aggressive medical management. There are um, you know, reports on, you know, is there a severe or moderate stenosis? That's usually not the, the main reason you would order this clearly scan. You know, typically if somebody's having symptoms, um, you may be doing other types of testing. So wouldn't expect you know, a screening test to have a severe or moderate stenosis. Not gonna be surprised if they find some mild stenosis. And typically uh, in my experience, the stenosis are somewhat slightly overcalled in the degree of uh, stenosis. And again, unless the person's symptomatic, uh, the degree of stenosis isn't the problem. It's the amount of plaque that's present. That's the concern. And the majority of people, they have right dominant coronary arteries. Let's not worry about that tonight. So the other nice thing about this is it gives you a kind of like Excel sheet, you know, where exactly is all the plaque. So the total plaque volume, uh, you know, 111.8 of it's in the left main and the left interior descending, 60.8 of it's in the right coronary artery, and 27.7 is in the circumflex, given a grand total of 200.3. We'll get into this in just a little bit. Is 200.3 a low number or a high number? But when I look at this report, I'm looking at this mainly, how much low density non-calcified plaque is there? Very little amount compared to the total burden. The majority of plaque is soft. So over time with aggressive lifestyle changes, supplements and potentially medications, the soft plaque may become calcified. It may delipidate or shrink. Um, the goal is that it never becomes necrotic ruptures and causes a heart attack or stroke for this individual. The calcium, there's none in the artery. So again, if they did just the traditional calcium score test, it's going to be zero. And then the overall percent atheroma volume. Again, there's a staging system coming up that we'll, we'll chat about. The stenosis, if you actually look at the uh, patient report that you give in with this, which is a nice color-coded report, much like all the advanced lab tests we do, um, you know, just your eyes drawn, there's no severe stenosis. So they quantify severe as, as stenosis greater than 70%. A moderate stenosis is between 50 and 69%, and a mild is less than 49%. So this individual had a few mild stenoses, maybe not surprising, but the goal is to stabilize those plaques. And then what is very novel and I think awesome is that you take a 3D uh, artery, which you know uh, I used to be in the cath lab. You know the right corner artery looks like a C, and it's you know swinging back and forth, you know under the uh, the II, the image intensifier. So you're taking a x-ray picture of the arteries uh, in you know, live motion. They take it and they stretch it out and I call it kind of like a roadmap. So this is the circumflex artery. And in the middle is where the contrast or um, radio opaque material is flowing. So it lights up the inner uh, lumen of the artery. And then the little yellow bumps, this is where the plaque is. And in this individual, the plaque is mostly positively remodeling. So the artery grows outward first and is not necessarily encroaching into the lumen. So you're not expecting this person to have any symptoms from this plaque. So the majority of this plaque is more of this yellow coated plaque. So it's the non-calcified plaque. There's no blue little specks that you can see here. And maybe it's right about there or so where, I'm sorry, the, maybe it's actually down low where the, uh, uh, the low density non-calcified plaque is. So a very low percentage of this uh, plaque is down here and is the more uh, potentially vulnerable plaques. So clearly recently sent out this uh, uh, article in the Journal of Cardiovascular Computed Tomography proposing a staging of atherosclerosis, much like staging cancers. Um, you know, the plaque burden is probably a bigger predictor of who has events versus the degree of stenosis. Stenosis generally will correlate with symptoms and high stenosis can increase ischemia or lack of 
nutrients and oxygen to tissues past the stenosis, but the plaque volume is a better predictor of who has heart attacks, strokes, and dies. So the staging will give you the total plaque volume, so how much plaque is in all three coronary arteries, what is the percent atheroma volume, so you know, in the artery wall, hopefully most of it is positively remodeling and not necessarily impacting the lumen. But where I think the major benefit is looking at the difference between the non-calcified plaques, the low density non-calcified plaques and the calcified plaques. And their staging algorithm, and this is where, um, you know, I walk patients through who have this test is, you know, a good score for the majority of people over the age of 40 is anywhere in the low 100s. So if you're under 250, they're going to consider that more mild, especially if your uh, percent atheroma volume is you know, no greater than 5%, you know, looking at you know, markers of endothelial function, markers of inflammation, looking at a NMR and APOB on your advanced lipid profile will guide how intense to use lipid lowering therapies. Um, the people who have a total plaque volume of greater than 750 have severe plaque. Um, these people need the kitchen sink sometimes thrown at them to start stabilizing the plaque. So this is something that is uh, just now coming to market in the past few months. I've had you know quite a few patients already get this test done. It's maybe not necessary for everybody because it does require IV contrast. They got to have healthy kidneys. It does generally require taking a beta blocker to slow the heart rate down while they uh, take the images. And at this time, this is a test that is more for screening purposes. So what that means is insurance will not necessarily cover this test. Or I should say will not cover this test. So this is a cash pay test at this stage. So that's why it's not necessarily for everybody, but for somebody who's more intermediate risk or somebody who's you know, hesitant or concerned about taking prescription medications to affect lipids, this is sometimes a good tiebreaker. If you have a very low score, then continue doing what you're doing from a lifestyle standpoint. If you have a very high score, Maybe reconsider your options because I've seen this in many patients so far where they will have a completely normal calcium score. Their score is zero. The radiologist who reads the baseline images at the imaging center that you go to often will read the report is completely normal. There are no plaques in the arteries. That's what happened to this individual. But when they use the AI machine learning algorithm from clearly, they're slicing it voxel by voxel. They will see the plaque at exquisite detail. So even though this was read as a normal CT angiogram, there is some mild plaque building up in this. And you know, I don't know the exact percentage, but I don't think it's gonna be extremely common that people over the age of 40 are always gonna have a score of zero. It's gonna be in the you know, few percentage points. More people are gonna have plaque in their arteries than they knew about. So I think that's one of the challenges of this test is because you're gonna find stuff that has never been found on other tests before. So you have to kind of take a holistic approach to things, you know, how healthy is the endothelium? What's their inflammation? What is their APOB, you know, lipid proteins? That all will help guide on like, well, is this person likely adding to plaque or have things been stabilized? But very interesting technology. I'm starting to use it more in patients. Uh, if you're interested in potentially getting this type of test, the next step would be reach out to me at my website, drtwyman.com. I've worked with patients all around the country in uh, trying to acquire this test. We do take a intake to make sure that this test is right for you. And, you know, if you have any allergies to medications or contrast, or, you know, are you able to take a bed blocker? We answer all those questions to make sure this test is right for you. So again, if you're interested in this type of test, uh, reach out to me at my website, drtwyman.com. Thank you.